Welcome to the Juice Cast. Today, we'll be joined by Shin, also known as Livid, from Planet. Planet is an open source tool that makes it easy to build your own decentralized websites using IPFS and ENS. For example, if you own the ENS drgorilla.eth, you can create a website accessible in almost any browser at drgorilla.eth.limo. In this episode, we talk about Shin's interest in retro gaming and how they discovered Ethereum, the importance of decentralized websites and content distribution, and how experiments like CropTop might emerge as a decentralized lo-fi version of Tumblr. We hope you enjoy this week's episode. All right, welcome Shin. Thank you for joining us today on the JuiceCast. How's it going? Oh, I'm good. Thank you for having me today. Hi, Mashu. Hi, Briley. Hi. So we, we know Shin as Livid. That's your um, your kind of Discord username and Twitter username. And that's how we've heard Django and others refer to you. So before we get into Planet, uh, one thing that we always like to ask guests is where their pseudonym comes from. So I was wondering if you could tell us the origin story of this name Livid and, and where that came from. Oh, actually, I, I've been using this name for over 20 years. Yeah, it was in early wow. 20, early 2000. I, I was playing with the electronic dictionary and uh, I just keep pressing the down button until I hit this word, leave it. And uh, it <laughs> said it's a color. It's a, it's a grayish, uh, dark blue color. And uh, I think it's pretty cool. And I find, find it's short and uh, it has some symmetry in, in, in the name, especially when the arrow is uppercase. So yeah, so since that, I've been using it as my internet alias name on Twitter and GitHub, Discord, yeah. One thing I wanted to ask about before diving into like crypto and sort of how you fell down the rabbit hole was that I noticed like on your Twitter that you post a lot about uh, sort of like retro games, like from the early 2000s, like SimCity comes to mind, which is a game that I actually used to play like when I was a kid, like I love The Sims in general. And so I just wanted to know what your relationship was to gaming and if that early internet, early computer experience had any impact on like the way that you found like crypto, like your relationship to that. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> That's a, that's a lot of memories. So I, <laughs> I got my first computer in 1996. So yeah, soon after that, I, I got a copy of the SimCity 2000. And that, that was the first time I, I got to play this uh, fantastic city building game. And I was quite fascinated about it. Since then, I became a fan. So yeah, I played the, every SimCity game after that. And uh, just until recent, I was curious. Uh, okay, what was the original? Yeah, SimCity look like. Then I I did some research and found a website called uh, macOS 9.app that actually lets you to pr try the classic version of macOS in the browser, and you can play the classic version of SimCity in the browser, which is uh, yeah amazing. Yeah. So I. So today I just wrote a post on my uh, eSlimo domain to write my to share my experience that how you can play the whole SimCity franchise in the year 2023. Yeah, why now <laughs> most, most of these games are considering retro games. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about your background. Can you tell us what you're up to before crypto and maybe how you fell down the rabbit hole? I think my first time I got into the crypto was uh, 2011. There was uh, this Bitcoin mining thing. Yeah. So I, I did try to mine some Bitcoin with my gaming rig. At that time, I was still in Shanghai. Yeah. So, so I, at that time, I, did, I, I, I can still remember that I mined about two Bitcoins a night at that time. Yeah. Then a I, night. Wow. Yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. At that time, about yeah, yeah, yeah. 2011. Yeah. So, and then I tried to put one on sale on an online community, and uh, it sold. 
it sold for about I believe ten dollars I guess at that time, <laughs> and that, that, that's all of it because you know that at time you if you have to keep your game machine on for keep、uh, for mining Bitcoin it becomes super loud and super hot so yeah so I I, I tried. Briefly a bit, but I didn't、uh, continue mining it. Yeah, so that, that was my early experience with、uh, Bitcoin. And later, I think later is a more、uh, is a, a more relevant to what I'm currently doing now. Is、uh, when a, a, a couple of years ago, when I was、uh, browsing Twitter, I I noticed that people starting started to use dot is in their username. So. I I was wondering. Okay, this thing look like a domain name. That can I use it as a domain name? So I I copy paste one of the is name into the browser, and I try to access it. It didn't work. It didn't work. But my curiosity didn't stop there. So I did a little bit more research and find out. Okay, if you have right tools. It can work. Like okay, if you put those dot、uh, um, is domain in a browser called、uh, Brave, it may work. So I think that's that's my starting point of this rabbit hole. And you also have made websites in in, in the past, like、uh, before Planet. So you're the creator, co-creator of a website called it's V two E X. I'm not sure how to how to、yes. say the name of the website, but I, I wonder if you could tell us briefly about what what that is and may, maybe how that led you to where you're going now. Like, is your background in like web、mm-hmm. development, or how, sort of how did you come into building Planet? And yeah. I started v2ex.com about ten years ago,、uh, in twenty ten.、Uh, in twenty ten, April, when I was still in China, it it is an online community of developers and designers. So it kind of like a Reddit, but only with those uh, uh, subreddit uh, of programming, hardware, gaming. Yeah, obviously the the topics that、uh, maybe nerds would like to discuss online. Yeah, so <laughs> <laughs> yeah,、uh, why I started that website in 2020? At that time, I I got an iPhone, iPhone 3G. So I, I and I found there wasn't too much thing that I can do on web with my iPhone. So I was thinking, okay, what if I can build a website? A interactive one that I can use it to、uh, hang out with my friends. That would be fun. So, so I started coding, and、uh, it was a very very simple site. It's a it only has a mobile layout optimized for the three G version of iPhone. And I after three days of coding, I launched it、uh, on V2X dot com in twenty ten April twenty five. I guess yeah. And it got popular between the programmers、uh, community in China. And since then, the website has grew into I think I believe it's a, it's a one of the most active programmer community for the Chinese speaking programmers. And it, now it has a six hundred k registered users and serve about twenty、uh, million page views a month. So wow, I learned a lot. From from that website, for example, maybe I learned programming, database performance, but I also learned some some not so pleasant things. Like when you are moderating a big community, sometimes that you can't just expect okay people post are all good. Sometimes you have to remove some things, and、uh, you know you know that such such thing become a Burden because we are a programmer community, so we have set some rules since day one. For example, we we do not allow any posting of uh, uh, piracy. I mean the copy copyright things. So so if we find people posting those things, we would remove it. And also we have several other rules. But it、uh, it is a、uh, Not a, always a pleasant thing to do when you need to remove that other people's posts. So from that, I have been thinking: okay, is it possible that we can 
we can make this new kind of website that people can take the full responsibility for what they post so that they can just post whatever they want and no one can remove their posts. Hmm, okay, so why don't we why don't we segue right into Planet from there? So can you tell us, just give us an overview of what Planet is and how it works? Yeah, so like I mentioned earlier, that I, I noticed that many people started to use in .es as their username. And actually there is this, uh, I believe it's a, it's a EIP, Ethereum standard, EIP 1577. It outlined the standard that you can set a content hash to your Ethereum name. And from that, you can have a website that's running on your um, Ethereum name. But uh, if you right now, if you try to Google, okay, how can I build a website with uh, IPFS and uh, ENS, you probably will get a page that is uh, full of command licenses, which may be too complicated for most of people. Right. So at that time, I came, this idea came to me that, okay, what if I can make a graphical interface to make this thing simpler so that we can just just use it and publish it to IPFS and people can just copy paste to link this website they built with Planet to their ENS name, like Django did. So about uh, one, years, one year ago, I started this project with a friend of mine and we launched Planet in June 2022. Yeah. Can you tell us like where the name Planet comes from like how did you come up with the name it kind of reminds me a bit of like the urbic community i'm not sure if you're familiar um with their like planets and like star system that name came from uh two inspirations one is okay so the the technology that it is based on is called uh, ipfs so the full name of ipfs is actually a uh, interplanetary fire system so there is this planet in the base technology that it is using. And also it came to me this idea that have you, I think you must heard of a, of a very classic novel called The Little Prince. It's about- Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. So it's about this little prince that on his own planet. It was a fascinating story. So when I was working on this project, that image that is in my mind, that when we are having, when we are posting something, when we are creating something with our Ethereum identity, it feels like, okay, we are that little prince on our own planet. Yeah. Can you tell us about some of your favorite websites that have been built using Planet? Like what are, what are some examples of some websites that have been built so far using Planet? Right up on our, our app is launched that um, I noticed a domain called Proof of Release. So that website take, no, uh, take notes of all the open source release in the crypto ecosystem. So it's like, okay, uh, Ethereum has a new version or Bitcoin has a Bitcoin core has a new version. That website would create a post about that release. And since the posts on IPFS is, uh, is somehow it feels like permanent and uh, it can last a long time. So I guess that's why that name, that website has its name called uh, Proof of Release. Yeah, that's one, one cool website. And uh, another one is uh, a friend of mine. He's, uh, yeah, he's also doing podcast. So he, he used to have a podcast blog running on WordPress. He's a programmer too. So he created a program to convert his WordPress podcast blog into Planet. So I guess now that website is probably the biggest podcast website on the Islimo domain. Uh, I can share the link later. It currently has uh, 90 episodes on that website. And, uh, and since it's uh, on IPFS, so with one command, we can actually get the file size of that website. That website site is about five gigabytes. It's a pretty large one. And also, uh, after we delivered the demo to Juicebox in uh, last December, 
I noticed that Django had set up his blog on Planet and started to writing about his idea and thoughts about Juicebox. And、uh, we recently we started a new collaboration that we are working on a template. It allows people to very easy to share、um, pictures. Yeah, it's called Crop Top. So about every month, I can I can see some new new websites being built with Planet. Could you tell us like how you first found Juicebox or like maybe the relationship with Django, which has like led to this collaboration with Crop Top and Planet, and like how that ultimately like led you to creating a project on Juicebox? It was a, a post that I read on twenty twenty one that that is、uh, one of Django's earlier Twitter posts about that Juicebox that can become a great place for indie developers. You know there are many、um, indie developers on GitHub. They probably doing their、uh, open source project for years, but they are relying on some. Centralized system for accepting donations like PayPal or or other things. Yeah, they they sure work. But right now it's 2023, right? So if we can have this new permissionless decentralized way to accepting donations, and based on the donations we can have a we can develop develop a token based community from that. That is something new. That is something exciting. Especially, you know that I play a lot, lot of retro games. Many of these retro game emulators, they are they are open source software. Probably just one or two guys working on that project for many many years. So I've been thinking, okay, what if all of those open source project can have a project on Juicebox so that their fans can support them with cryptos and they can. They can further integrating those、uh, token activities with their communities. Like maybe they can have special areas on their Discord servers or things like that. Yeah, those are new exciting things that Juicebox can make possible. Yeah, I love that. I think it's an underutilized way to use Juicebox. I don't think we've seen a ton of developers use Juicebox as a way for people to support them, but I think it makes a lot of sense that if you have an open source project that develops an audience, then it makes perfect sense for that audience to want to, even if it's a small amount of of money, it could be twenty or fifty dollars or what have you, to just put the money into the Juicebox, and then the Juicebox project is also not like promotion, but it but it's also a place for people to. Like see the project on Juicebox Dot Money, and then hopefully you know it gains more of a following, and more people hear about it. And I think it makes a lot of sense. I think we'll we'll have to try and convince more developers to start their own projects. But、uh, I'm glad that you're you're leading the way in terms of Crop Top. I'm I guess I'm wondering because we've we've looked through Django's blog that uses Crop Top, and it has all the these kind of snippets of images, like screenshots and images that that he collects and. What struck me was that it felt a lot like Tumblr, and I'm I'm not sure if if you've ever used、yeah. Tumblr, but for me that was like a very formative internet experience. Was browsing Tumblr, making my own Tumblr, and it was it was not only very customizable, but it, you know, but it it was it was a way to discover things that you found inspirational, whether that was like fashion or art or music. But it was also a way for you to find other people that were interested in similar things to you, and and. Tumblr had this way of kind of like graphing different interests together, as like a like a social graph. And I feel like Crop Top could be something like a decentralized Tumblr, where you have this feeling of like the infinite scroll of just going through and seeing all of these images, and they could be ideas or just jokes, or they could be you know very serious things as well. So yeah, I'm curious. What do you see crop top becoming, or like what 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 is the purpose of of the crop top、uh, experiment? It's a quite exciting thing, and it's still evolving fast. Yeah, yeah. I think we started in in early April.、Uh, one day that Django just、uh, just poked me on Discord. That he he asked that okay, by any chance are you in Bay Area? I said okay, I'm not far. I mean, South California. I can I can fly over to meet you, and so right after that, 
we we meet in real life in San Francisco, and he showed me a template that he has been playing for some time. He built a prototype of crop top with a Flickr API and、uh, and any a- application that can accept drag and drop on the dock. So whenever you take a screenshot. You just drag and drop that screenshot into that Flickr app, and that Flickr app can upload that picture to Flick, and then you can you can pull the API to get the latest posts on Flickr, and、uh, and render all your、uh, latest pictures in a random way, like what you saw、uh, with crop top. So Django showed me that template and asked me, okay, is it possible to make this? A template in Planet. I said, "Okay, that's not hard. Give me about thirty minutes." <laughs> so at that time, I converted his、uh, prototype into a Planet template, and that, that's how we started. And from that, we we added the ability for user to drag and drop pictures onto the Planet icon. And recently, Django has been、uh, working on some contract. So that the templates can link with the Juicebox project, so the、uh, the posts on crop top side that can be minted, yeah. And、uh, I believe that's that's just a starting point. There'll be many many new,、uh, exciting experimental things to come. Yeah. Why do you believe that decentralized websites and decentralized content distribution is important? Um, it's um, I can't say it's better, but at some point, I think at least it's very, very different. Let Let's take the crop top as an example. Yeah, when when you are posting a pictures to Tumblr, the behavior is actually you you upload your files into someone else's server, and rely on that someone else to not go down. Not remove your stuff, but、uh, with this complete self-hosting solution, is、uh, okay. You save what you find interesting, and you just publish it from your own computer, and you have the total control of the content of the things that you collect, you create, and no one can remove that or disable that. And after you share that、uh, planet link with your friends, and they can start start following you. With our、um, Planet app, as more and more people following you on Planet, that means that your content will get more copies on the whole IPFS network, so that it will become faster for new people. And、um, even one day, if the original author no longer maintain the website, that website will still have a copy on the whole internet. It will not get lost un- un- unless okay, no one cared about it. Yeah, I wonder because as we were preparing for this episode, I you know we both tried to dive into how IPFS works and you know a little bit of the the details of the、uh, EIP fifteen seventy seven that makes all this possible with ENS. And one thing that stood out to me was that at least how I think of ENS addresses, like of course we all have. ENS addresses, but the way that they often really are used is is mostly as human readable addresses for a a full, you know, a full long address that starts with zero x. And you know, you use a DAP, and then the DAP will have a subgraph that'll pull up, you know, your your ENS name instead of the long the long address, and that's nice and it's useful and it's useful when sending funds as well. But I feel like. There could be a deeper role for the ENS address, which is more tied to identity. And we can think of wallets as identities, as digital identities, for sure. And that makes a lot of sense. But I feel like this idea of using your ENS also as a way to host your own website,、uh, it, to me, is compelling as a way of extending that on-chain identity to also having like a personal website, whether that's a website related to work or just. Maybe something you're working on, a, a side project, or you know anything、uh, like a blog or what, what have you. Maybe just a list of books that you're reading, or the options are kind of endless. So I'm wondering, like, how you think about Planet as as a way to kind of 
extend the the utility of like an ENS address. To me, to me, it makes a lot of sense, but I hadn't thought of ENS addresses in, in that way before getting into Planet and learning more about it. I believe there, there is a huge uh, op- opportunity here. There are about 3 million ENS registered, but uh, only about um, 20K has set a website on, on, the, on the ENS, and most of them are actually not, not accessible because, because if no one ping that website, that's, that website will just time out. But why? Why, why only 20, 20 records on the whole ENS ecosystem? It was, I think one reason for that is uh, it's like, like I mentioned earlier. If you Google, okay, how can I have a website on the ENS domain? You probably get something quite complicated. One thing is uh, okay. You you probably get a lot of uh, IPFS commands. That is one thing. Another is uh, you have you heard of Flick? Mm-hmm. Yeah, we know yeah. Flick. Yeah, yeah, Flick. Flick actually is a quite great platform, but it's a platform for developers because if you want to uh, build a website with Flick, you first need to have a GitHub account. And you link that GitHub account with your Flickr account, so that when you so when you push your code to GitHub, then they can get deployed on Flick, and then you can uh, link that Flickr website to your ENS. That works great for for developers, but uh, not for everyone. So I think there is a huge opportunity here if that we can make something easy to use, fun to use, different, and uh, yeah. The important thing is, okay, it's different, it's fun, so that people have a, a curiosity to try this thing out. You quickly mentioned pinning, and I, I know that that's one of the maybe, I don't want to say downsides, but it's one of the things that makes dealing with IPFS a little bit challenging at times is that because it is decentralized, you have to ensure that there's a copy of it somewhere at all times so that it remains accessible, which is what where you know pinning services come in, and if I'm not mistaken, I f- I feel like Planet was developing a like pinning as a service offering of of some kind. Can you can you tell us about Pinnable? Is is it called Pinnable? I, yeah, I remember pinnable. reading about this somewhere on on your project. So I'm curious how you're planning to also offer uh, pinning for potential Planet users. Yes, that, that's a project we launched on Juicebox. It's called uh, Pinnable. So the goal is to um, develop an open source software so that a- anyone can use it to build a pinning service. Yeah, and also we're, after we uh, build the software ourselves, we'll also launch our own instance for uh, our user to, to use. And uh, why we build this? You probably know there is already many um, pinning services right now, like uh, Pinata like uh, Web3 Storage and uh, Firebase. So soon after last year, uh, soon la- last year, we launched the Planet app. We actually um, tried to try all the pinning service available. And uh, our conclusion is, it seems that most, if not all those pinning services, their business model are designed around business. I mean, their pricing, their um, user interface, they are designed around those uh, um, business projects like NFT projects or other um, large uh, things. They are not designed for personal projects. If we want this uh, ENS website new world, okay, I think pinning is uh, absolutely one problem that we need to solve. So we build, uh, we started building Pinnable. The goal is to make a, a service also open source software that is uh, um, built around the personal needs for pinning a personal website on IPFS. So basically, as opposed to like Firebase, which is basically like an Amazon S3 kind of, but make it (laughs) decentralized, uh, Mm -hmm. this will be like a smaller scale offering that someone could use for, you know, a small website just for themselves or, you know, like a few users. Okay. Anything else exciting on the horizon for Planet that you want to mention? Like what kind of what's coming in the next few months or the next year? 
so right now we are going to uh, launch uh, the collaboration of crop top. Uh, I think we are going to launch it in the early June. And right now we are we are doing a lot of testing and a new development. So if you are interested, you can join our Discord server to yeah to take a look and try the insider builds. And uh, yeah, in the next month, we'll release the pinnable and also launch the first uh, pinnable instance so that people who have uh, supported us on our JuiceBoss project can start it to using that new infrastructure to pin their personal website. And uh, there is uh, one little difference between pinnable and other pinning services. If you have used other pinning services, that you will notice that they basically they provide two uh, base units for you to pin something. One thing is that okay, they uh, they want to make it familiar to those people who has already used S3, so that you can use S3 to to upload something. Or if you already have a CID, you can pin by CID. So their base unit is the S3 API or CID, but uh, with pinnable. Our base unit is a website, either a website on ENS or a website on IPNS. So that when you started using Pinnable, you will just provide your ENS name. You don't need to care about what folder or CID, those technical details. You just provide your uh, ENS name and uh, Pinnable will pin that for you. And uh, I believe that we make makes things a lot of simpler and easier to use. Yeah. And we are going to launch that in next month and continue uh, iterating on that. I'm wondering if we can, um, before wrapping up, dive a little bit into the past, just because like you mentioned that your interest in crypto like dates back to like 2011. And I was wondering if you mm -hmm. could tell us like how your view of crypto has evolved since then, because like obviously a lot has like changed within the, the landscape. So I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about that or maybe some things that you feel like you've learned through that experience of like from then to where we are now. The early days of the crypto is, uh, is Bitcoin. So it has uh, this simplicity, but uh, some very killer features like okay you can securely transfer money you know, or transfer values between people and you know that it's very hard to attack and uh, your money cannot be double spent things like that but uh, what has changed since then is uh, this new programmable uh, blockchain like ethereum and the other new chains and uh, i think that's quite quite exciting things for for us is uh, you know that Web3 is a, is a very big topic. If you ask a, a hundred people, okay, what Web3 is, you probably get a hundred different answers. Okay, to me, if you ask me, okay, what, what, what is Web3? I think my answer is, uh, it's this uh, new um, database API from a developer perspective. To me, it's a new, it's a new database API that you can learn and build something with that database API. And your data will be um, stored and also your logic and will be stored and be public to the everyone on the internet. And uh, that means that, okay, you cannot reuse a lot of your experience, your past experience when building this new system. But uh, this new system enables so many things that weren't possible before. Like, okay, you don't, you don't need to worry about, okay, what if my server goes down? For example, Juicebox contract is running on the, on the Ethereum so that it will continue working. So you don't need to worry about, okay, well, what if server goes down? There is just so, so much different. So I think what I'm interested in is, is the programmable things that you can do with crypto. And uh, I like to build in these things with those new APIs and the new possibilities. Do you have any other final thoughts that you would like to share before we wrap up, whether that's about Planetable or like something unrelated to that, like any last thoughts that you'd like to close on or something that we didn't cover earlier in the recording? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for having me today. And uh, yeah, before you go, yeah, I do 
remember one more thing. In late June this year, as I believe it's June 2021 to 25th in Northern California, Internet Archive have a, we have a wonderful meeting for decentralized web. It's called、uh, D Web Camp, and、uh, I'll go that. So I'll show you a link, so you can probably put that link in the show notes. And、uh, that's a pretty cool、uh, conference about decentralized web. And I heard this year we probably have a chance to meet Tim Bursley, the inventor of World Wide Web. Wow! Wow!、Yeah. That's super cool. <laughs> Yeah, it's like yeah. meeting God,、um, you know. <laughs> 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 I like that. Yeah. Awesome. Okay, so there's the the conference happening in yeah in, in June. So yeah, we can definitely link、uh, to the event.、Mm-hmm. I'm sure there's probably more than one listener that will <laughs> probably be in the area and interested in in checking it out. So yeah, we'll we'll be sure to link it in the show yeah, notes. Let me、um, type that link the, to the chat. The the、yeah. Internet Archive. That's the the Wayback Machine, right? That that's their、yes. their project. Yes. Yeah, that's by Internet Archive. Have you worked with them in the in the past, or like, do you have some some connection to them other than just generally being interested? Or so earlier this this year, I I got a chance to demonstrate the Planet app with the Internet Archive founder Brewster Cow, and、uh, after seeing our product, that Brewster was、uh, excited, so he went to his office and、uh, printed his、uh, white paper. About the decentralized web, and and gave me that copy, and I asked him to sign that, and he signed, go go go, yeah, <laughs> on that paper, on that copy for me, and、uh, that was the <laughs> incredible experience. Because after that, I I read I read his paper. He outlined a product that wasn't there in twenty sixteen, but.、Uh, Most of his ideas in 2016 actually has became a reality right now with、mm-hmm. uh, with Planet with、uh, the new improvements in the Ethereum ecosystem. Yeah, and I also showed him some other things that I built from the data I downloaded from Internet Archive. <laughs> What have you built with that data? I'm just curious. So you know that actually Internet Archive they have the most complete. A collection of retro games. So basically,、mm. you can find any retro games ever released in their most complete form. There is this conception called no intro. Okay, back in twenty years ago, when people are downloading game ROMs from internet, and those ROMs, like these Game Boy Advance ROMs, are probably Cracked by some hackers, so those hackers probably add something when the game start, and those things are called called intro. So there is this、um, enthusiast group on the internet. They want to have this database about the unmodified version of those game ROMs. So they maintain this database called no intro database.、Mm. Basically, a database that of all the MD5 and the SHA1 of the pure version of the retro games. It's this huge database, and based on that database, someone actually made the collection of those games and uploaded them to Internet Archive, so that you can find those pure purest version on Internet Archive. So, I made another database. Based on those data, data is that I want to have a database of all the 8-bit and 16-bit retro game screenshots. So I I build this thing. I call it GameDB. So it has、uh, at least right now it has all the screenshots of the NES Nintendo Entertainment System games. All the screenshots. So. I built it as a website. It has all the screenshots, and、uh, I added a feature that if you have an emulator configured on your Mac computer locally, you can actually launch that game from your website. Actually, if you have time, I can do a quick demo for you. <laughs> sure. <laughs>、yeah. Amazing. Okay. So this is a this is a demo idea back at the Internet Archive. So I built this website. It's a 
It's a database of all the 8-bit, 16-bit retro games. And it has the swim shots. So, and it has this index from A to Z. Oh, so, okay. Can, wow. you, can you name one NES game? I feel like there would have been Zelda at the time, yeah. right? Yeah. Actually, um, the first version of Zelda is on the NES. It's called The Legend nice. of Zelda. Zelda. Yeah, and yeah, it's yeah. released in 1987. So with this website, wow. you, can, you can see <laughs> what it looked like in 1987. Wow. It's amazing. And, uh, and here, you see this button. Yeah. We can launch this game. Wow. So and in order to works. do this, you would need to have an emulator yeah. on your local machine. Yeah, it's a, a, a emulator configured on my local machine. And uh, I made this link on this website so it can somehow work with the local emulator. The website doesn't have any games. It's just a link. So it can call the, the emulator to actually start that game locally. Wow, that's amazing. Are, are the emulators hard to, hard to come across? Like, is it difficult to set one up locally? Or I can share you a, a tutorial I wrote. <laughs> so that's, <laughs> that's, amazing. that's why I have this gamedb.es yeah, domain. Ah. It's all about the right, right, retro game. And uh, nice, yeah. I think on the Chinese version of it, I, I wrote a configuration guide. I can later translate it to English about how you can get this emulator to work. Yeah, that's super cool. I love that. Yeah, <laughs> amazing, awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for sharing. I also want to say this is such an awesome template that you just showed on on that website, the the GameDB website with the kind of Tron grid background that keeps scrolling mm -hmm. and scrolling it's it's really really good yeah it was uh it was you know that yeah, two years ago when when it was uh, the peak of the pandemic i have been locked at home <laughs> and <laughs> i have a, yeah. a lot of time if i didn't do this right now i probably won't, won't have a chance so <laughs> so anyway i did this side project <laughs> called game db and uh, it's uh, so i can check one 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 more thing on my bucket list <laughs> So we will link to the Planet uh, project in, in the show notes so that uh, anyone listening can check out the project on Juicebox and support it if they want to. And also we'll link like planetable.xyz so that people can check it out and try it themselves. Uh, we've seen the demos in, in Juicebox Town Hall, and it's really very simple. The end results, you know, technically under the hood is kind of complex, but but really the user experience is super easy. It's it's very easy to actually make a website in this way. It's kind of it's kind of amazing. I mean, you think that it would be really complicated, but it's been made super simple. So we'll link to everything in the show notes, and uh, yeah, we'll try to uh, get more decentralized websites out there. So yeah, thanks so much for for joining us, Shin. It was it was fun. We we got to dive down this little rabbit hole that we don't know uh, as much about, you know, with decentralized websites and IPFS and all that. And yeah, it was great. So thank you so much for joining us. We're gonna be following very closely to uh, yeah Planet and Crop Top and all the other experiments yeah thank you it's a lot of fun talking with you yeah thank you